Kid Cudi, whose real name is Scott Mescudi, is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, and actor. Throughout his career, he's been open about his struggles with mental health issues, substance abuse, and the challenges he's faced in the music industry. So today, we're going to be exploring Kid Cudi. Hey Cudi fans, welcome to the channel. My name's Cameron Explores. I do deep dives on comedians, rappers, YouTubers, celebrities, kind of in the nostalgia era. 10, 20 years ago, and what happened to them now. This video is a little bit different as Kid Cudi is still relevant now and he's made a great comeback, but I wanna talk about the era of Kid Cudi from 2006 to 2016, and we'll touch on where Cudi is now at the end of the video. So today we're digging deep into the cosmic world of none other than the moon man himself, Kid Cudi. But buckle up, because we're not just talking beats and rhymes, we're unraveling the roller coaster of his life, the highs, the lows, and everything in between. So hit that like button because I got the man on the moon hoodie here. Make sure to subscribe for future videos so I can get out of Canada and move to Japan and enjoy this video. The Ducey documentaries, we always talk, all we talk about all day in this documentary is taking shits. Picture this, the early 2000s where hip hop was taking on new dimensions, enter Kid Cudi. Not just an artist, but a musical maverick. His genre-defying sound was like a spaceship on uncharted territories. From man on the moon to pursuit of happiness, Cuddy's vibes were out of this world. But hey, every superhero has an origin story, right? So in 2008, Kid Cuddy released his album, A Kid Named Cuddy. At a Def Jam meeting, he gave to Kanye West, which is the start of their long, rocky friendship. Now this is kind of the golden era of Kid Cudi from 2008 to 2013. Kid Cudi was releasing albums and working with Kanye, releasing timeless classic music that really grew his fan base. Now let's fasten our seatbelts as we navigate through the challenges Kid Cudi faced mental health, substance abuse, he bared it all. I want kids to look at me at, and understand what not to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was dealing with my drug issues back in 2010, 2009, you know, I was just heavy into cocaine. And it was like do, 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 a do, big do, thing for me. Do, yeah, <laughs> cocaine. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and it was like <clears throat> a really big thing for me. And it was something that, you know, kept me level. It was something that I felt like I needed, self-medicating. and uh, you know. So was, you felt like cocaine kept you level? Yeah, man, because I had this whole technique uh, uh -oh. where I don't know if I even should get into this. I don't even want to talk about this. These you don't have to. Fucking run around and talk and do it. You know. But let's just say I, I got into like you know uh, what I would call like you know a trifecta, which was you know I would wake up in the morning, I would uh, you know do coke immediately, even before I had cereal breakfast, Whoa. And, and then I would have a beer. And then I would smoke weed. So, like, I never wanted people to know I was doing cocaine. So the beer and the marijuana leveled me out in a way where I was able to walk in the streets and talk and, and seem as though I wasn't on anything. But deep inside, I'm just like, zing! You know, with my face, I'm just like, yeah, that's right. You know, but what it did for me, uh, it, it completely numbed me. I didn't care about anything, and I was a robot. But also... With with being so numb, it allowed me to go out and meet my fans and be out in the streets. So in a twisted way, it did it did a positive thing for me, and that's mm. why I didn't see it as an issue. In 2016, dropped a bombshell on Facebook saying that he was checking himself into rehab. It's it's been difficult for me to find the words to what I'm about to share with you because I feel ashamed, ashamed to be a leader and hero to so many while admitting I've been living a lie. Uh, it took me a while to get to this, this place of commitment, but it is something I have to do for myself, my family, my best friend, daughter, and uh, all of you, my fans. Yesterday, I checked myself into rehab for depression and suicidal urges. I'm not at peace. I haven't been since you've known me. If I didn't come here, I would have done something to myself. I simply am a damaged human swimming in a pool of emotions every day of my life. 
there is a raging, violent storm inside of my heart at all times. I decay what peace feels like. I get how to relax. My anxiety and depression have ruled my life for as long as I can remember. And I never leave the house because of it. I, I can't make new friends because of it. I don't, don't trust anyone because of it. And I'm tired of being held back in my life. I deserve to have peace. It really takes guts to open up like that and make a public post about your own mental health. And it kind of made Kid Cudi an icon in this aspect of being able to talk about your issues in mental health and struggle and have all the support I'm really you. sorry to all my fans for you guys knowing that I do cocaine now. Or I <laughs> used to. I don't do it anymore. Uh, I'm sorry if I let anyone down. Fuck that. You know? Fuck that. It was really fuck just that. like, I'm dealing with some shit. If you don't understand it, I don't give a fuck. This is how I was surviving. If I didn't do it, I would have blew my brains out. Well, I like you how know? you describe it, too, because you're very honest about the positive aspects of the effects. And I think that's super important. And this was my contract, by the way. <laughs> used oh, the release? Yeah. Don't worry about it, man. Sorry. Don't worry about it. You, I'm an actor. You were, Everything's a prop. Your method. Your very method. <laughs> You're very honest about the positive benefits of it. Like, people have this idea, like, you shouldn't talk about positive benefits of any drugs, whether it's harmless drugs like marijuana or dangerous drugs like cocaine, maybe even especially dangerous drugs like cocaine, because the reality of what you're saying, your experience and the positive aspects of your experience, it's like, he's promoting drugs, when clearly you're doing just the opposite. Yeah. You're talking about how you needed them and used them and they helped you, but the reality is, it was because you were dealing with an issue. Right. And it just helped mask the issue, but right. it did help. Yeah. And to lie and deny that, it clouds the issue. For people dealing with their own drug issues, dealing with their current drug issues or their past drug yeah. issues, if people aren't honest about it, man. It puts people in this weird place where like, you know what, if I wasn't for fucking meth, I would have never started this business. You know, like, <laughs> I, the reason why I'm doing so well is because I got on meth. Like, yeah, I mean, I, there's I some think people that, that can say that probably. Well, I, the only reason why I could sit here and say that is because like I've been four years clean, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not like. Right, you're not it's, dipping it's, back it's, in. Yeah, and it's a, and I can speak about it candidly, and it's not something I'm weird about, and uh, I, I've just grown so much since then. And I also know that the more I talk about it, you know, the more it'll help somebody else who might mm -hmm. be dealing with it. You know what I mean? Definitely. It, it, you know, I when you're in that, it's probably just it seems like you can't get out of it because it is like a thing. You know what I mean? It's a cycle. It, it, yeah. So 2016 was really the fall of Kid Cudi. He found himself in such a dark place that he was contemplating suicide and lost his will to live. After the emotional Facebook post in 2016, he revealed he's checking himself into rehab, but it was a long journey for recovery. Cuddy was isolating himself, not talking to his friends, not wanting to leave his house, and he wasn't happy. The newfound fame really got to him. He said, I accomplished what I came to New York City to accomplish, but I was miserable. You know, there would be some nights where I'd be at the club and I would just run out the club and run for blocks. And I would hop in a yellow cab trying to get away from my security. Basically, when Kid Cudi became so famous, he started having anxiety and the loss of his privacy. Public's eye every day really got to him. So Kid Cudi had previously had drug problems and he was uh, charged for possession of controlled substance quit temporarily, but ended up relapsing. It wasn't just personal battles. Cuddy also had a showdown with the music industry. Kanye's good music, a powerhouse, right? Well, not for Kid Cuddy. He felt like a musical astronaut trapped in a black hole of creative constraint. Even superheroes need their independence, and Cuddy decided to take the intergalactic route solo. Let's talk quickly about Kid Cuddy's flavor. The cosmic fusion of hip-hop, rock, and psychedelic alternatives left critics scratching their heads. Cudi's style was like a musical supernova. Beautiful, explosive, and impossible to ignore. Especially his humming, which has become iconic over the years. So, who needs boundaries when you're creating your own galaxy? But you know what's even more impressive is Kid Cudi's resilience. Despite the struggles, he continued to create music that resonates with fans worldwide. 
It's like he's on a quest to explore the realms of his own creativity. The Moon Man may have faced some dark nights, but he's emerged even stronger, wiser, and more creative than ever. Yeah. What's up? Mm -hmm. And there you have it. Kid Cudi's journey. Stardom. Currently, Kid Cudi is working on Star Trek. He dropped Man of the Moon 3, the intergalactic uh, movie. It's starting to feel like bounce back. Not to say that he ever had any bad music or anything like that, but Man on the Moon 3 was definitely one of my favorite albums of all time. Let me know in the comments what your favorite album of Kid Cudi is, or maybe what your, and, and what your least favorite album of Kid uh, My personal ranking, my least favorite was uh, Speeding Bullet to Heaven, or maybe Wizard. Now my favorite's Man on the Moon 3. It's right up there. I think all of the Man on the Moons are amazing, and uh, Kids See Ghosts, of course. All right, thanks for watching. Go to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.